Welcome to Meditation and Aliens with Doro and Matt, a webcast that explores everything we currently know about the truth about aliens, human history, reality, consciousness, and the role meditation can do to help us understand all these things, and how we might all work together to build the best world possible for all beings, human or non-human alike. Meditation and Aliens is hosted by me, Matt Reddy. I'm an amateur ufologist. I have a degree in philosophy. I'm the creator of HiveOne.net. I'm also an elected public hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. Each week, I am joined by Doro Kiley, longtime meditator, meditation teacher, and an experiencer with many stories, and life coach extraordinaire. You can find more about Doro at her website, creationcoach.com. Now, on to the show. All right, we're back for another episode. How you doing, Doro? I'm doing great. I got some good news to share today about the the uh, Stephen Greer updates, and so we'll see what uh, what's going. Things are moving, and that's that's the good news. So, and how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm getting ready for my uh, uh, for a little vacation, and uh, you know we'll be on hiatus here for uh, a few weeks. Although we'll have a couple episodes that are uh, on some of our more philosophical discussions that we'll put out awesome. during those two weeks. Yeah, and I got some interesting stuff uh, to chat about, but why don't we, I'm curious, what do you have from uh, Stephen Greer? Yeah, well, um, I thought it was a, a new video he just put out, but I looked at the date and it was a, a couple weeks old, but it's talking about June 20th. Um, where there's some kind of there's something has been passed and you know I didn't I didn't pay attention to all the legalities but in essence what it's going to do is um, anybody and he gave some examples about you know these people coming to him um, whistleblowers ready to give some information he's had he, he said he had uh, at least one person threatened and you know that this black car pulls up in front of his house and and these guys in black suits get out and say look at your phone look at your computer and they had covered everything with child pornography and they said if you continue to whistle blow and bring this information forward you're going to find yourself in prison for the rest of your life so this is what he says is the the kind of thing he's been dealing with trying to get whistleblowers to come forward uh, so what's happening on June 20th is something legally is now going to give them much more protection. And um, so the protection for the whistleblowers, so they can come forward. And, and Greer says he, he suspects we're going to get a lot more information coming forward after that point. Mm. So things moving forward there. And he was also giving very kind of I thought almost extreme warnings about this blue beam project that that has been uh, talked about going on. And what that is, is kind of a false invasion, you know, a staged invasion from outer space that's supposed to terrify everybody into, you know, one world government. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, he says, this is really very real. And we've got to get people aware of it so that if it actually happens people won't uh won't just fully you know fall on their knees in terror that this is a this is supposedly a, an operation coming from us right so the bad guys here on this planet yeah um so i didn't finish listening to the whole thing uh and you know um i think there's more to to find in that video let's see if i can get the the name of it. This particular Greer video is called Breaking News. Dr. Greer drops bombshell information, catastrophic di disclosure. So maybe we can put the link to that below if uh, if you want to. Uh, I'll finish listening to it. I'm only a few minutes away from the end. So but I think that was the basic gist of it. So we've got to get the word out that there is this so-called blue beam project that is supposed to terrify everybody with alien invasions <laughs> and uh, don't worry about it he says so yeah and, and that's, that's been is big yeah yeah that's been floating around there 
I mean, he's been talking about that for years. And... Yeah, he sounded like it was, it, you know, it, if they're going to do it, they're going to do it soon. That, that was kind of the message I was getting. So that's why he's making it sound very urgent to get the word out. Well, it, it does seem like things are coming to a head yeah. in this alien disclosure. I mean, and from so many different dimensions, from the elections, from AI seeming to be uh, revealing itself, human AI as being about to achieve ridiculous things with GPT-5 and with uh, with Elon Musk and Starship, um, you know, launching the, the most powerful rocket ever just yesterday. Wow. Um, with uh, with Neuralink, you know, the brain, human brain, oh. computer interface. <laughs> yes. Um, and and I mean, the disclosure movement, you know, the uh, the big law, the uh, the 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 uh, UFO UAP Disclosure Act is back in its full form for this year, you know, and the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, again, is sponsoring it. Again, they're going to make another push to try to get the elected U.S. government in full authority over whatever the secrets are that are held in the government archives related to UAPs and aliens. And so, so it seems I have a question good. about that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, if this is, if aliens have been here for, you know, hundreds or thousands of years, how is it that the, how is it that this could fall under the American government? I mean, I don't think it does in any, right. um, I mean, I think the, the human secret keepers are not within the U S government. They are most, they're some sort of organization outside the U S government. And that's been around before the U S government, the U S ever existed. And, it's funny. I mean, I think a lot of the UFO ufology community, their brains are stuck in the mud because they only try to come up with theories that explain things since Roswell in World War II. Mm. So they limit their thinking to somehow that the U.S. government is somehow the container of all the power and all the knowledge. And that's <laughs> right. And I just think it's just so just like you. They've been here thousands of years. They've been involved the uh before every government you know before the u.s was ever created and so I, I look more at the formation of the u.s and i think that there were likely you know underground you know alien uh bases and cities all over the planet for thousands of years and that means there were some in the continental u.s and so then if the secret keepers knew that they had to protect the major entrances or locations of these bases from the beginning of the U.S. and it seems so obvious to me the way they did it was with, you know, you just look at what locations were protected in a way that they could have contained some incredible things this entire time, and you know, in some uh, Indian reservations yeah. could have been key. And there's tons of stories that there are underground bases and military bases um, on some of these. Uh, reservations particularly in navajo where the skinwalker legend is really big yeah um and i've heard from members who have interacted with uh you know lots of different tribes i, I mean i've even asked you know some members of local tribes here like if you were to if if one or two of our uh tribes in the u.s had knowledge about aliens and was hiding it for like thousands of years which one would you say and it was like they immediately say navajo <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, okay. they say it's I would like, have said uh, Hopi, but not. Oh, Hopi. well, definitely a Hopi also, because the Hopi have the uh, legend of the ant people underground. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a, uh, I think it's a, uh, the power is outside of the U.S. I mean, I think the part of the U.S. government that knows is, uh, to me, it's a rogue part of the U.S. government, or it's a, it's a part of the U.S. government that's not controlled by our elected leaders. So it's not even... It's not really part of our government. It just happens to probably, though, have access to a ton of our money and our military and our weapons and uh, probably yeah, well, has another thing Greer was saying was that there is developing or has been coming together what he calls a cell It's like a um, a group of people within this whatever is going on, you know, secretly that there there's a rather large um 
people coming together, getting ready. And this is again coming out. I mean, they're ready to to come up. These are all whistleblowers, right? So everybody getting together to protect each other's back and, and come out of the shadows all at once um, is what Greer was saying. And I, I get the sense that all of this is supposed to happen towards the end of this month. So yeah, eyes open. Anyway, continue. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. It, it seems, you know, I think like Lou Elizondo, David Grush, Christopher Mellon, uh, the Rear Admiral Gallaudet, you know, all these <laughs> military figures. Uh, there's even L Lekatsky, uh, Sands. There's there, there's been the the first wave of whistleblowers and military um, truth tellers, and they are definitely organized. And they they seem to have, you know, Grush says he has 40 more oh. uh, detailed inside knowledge. That's what he testified to. But it's, you know, you can't just like, um, I, you know, they have to come out in a way that is safe. You know, no one wants their like retirement money and their bank accounts or to have what, you know, Greer was describing to have like personal attacks. Uh, yeah, blackmail. Framed for crime. Yeah. So... Yeah, and you know, Lou Elizondo's book is scheduled to come out in August, and supposedly it's going to give us some more stuff. So they're setting this up to tr possibly really have some, you know, push this issue to get on the roadmap before the election. Which, you know, if wouldn't uh, that be great? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if nothing else, they should be able to get the JFK, you know, uh, assassination files on the agenda for this election. That should be debated with. It's like they have no excuse, Trump and Biden, for continuing to hide you know, that uh, the data, the, the the truth about the assassination. But they have to hide it because the data is, I believe, going to show it's connected to this whole thing. It's part yeah. of the House of Cards. Yeah. Oh, dear. Well, it does look like things might be uh, considerably different by the end of the summer before elections. So... Let's hope things go smoothly. Yeah. Oh, and then a really interesting event. Uh, Trump came out with his like top 10 VP list. Like he sent apparently uh, oh. letters this week to invite these 10 individuals to go through the vetting process for VP. Oh. Um, but his top three apparently includes Marco Rubio, Senator Marco Rubio, who is a advocate for disclosure, who is on the record saying Either either the U.S. government is hiding the, the greatest secret of all time, that there's some sort of alien species with UFO or, you know, advanced technology, or there is a ton of incredibly highly important, high ranking, powerful people in the U.S. government who are crazy. <laughs> He's like, those yeah. are the only two things, because too many people have come to him and said this is true, and they're either crazy insane or part of some ridiculous psyop or this is the biggest secret of all time that's been hidden so if, if trump chooses rubio there's no there, this has to i mean that would be the smartest thing for him to do if, i mean it's like it should be a competition who's going to be the disclosure president who's really going to take this seriously seriously and tell the truth and oh cold heart cold heart just said that trump he said in a speech just recently that trump knows aliens are real but he it didn't tell us because he's convinced he would be assassinated if he told the world before you know the powers that be well that's not good i mean how, what do we do now because if every if if he's if the president or potential president is afraid of being assassinated if he says anything that's not hopeful well i think that's been the truth since kennedy like okay. that's that's what happened kennedy was the that established that they will kill you if you tell you know that the presidents i don't think have been in power since Kennedy. A lot of people are saying that was when the coup happened. The US government has been under yeah. control since then. Of yeah, I believe the, the outside or some secret group. But but like you, I'm, you're you're hearing these stories. I mean, I don't think Lou Elizondo, David Grush, and all these people come forward unless they have changed the uh the balance of power in at least the the group in our government capable of assassinations and stuff like that. I, they must even um, Christopher Mellon said this a couple of years ago in a big talk. He was saying when he first went public, he was scared for his safety, but then something changed and he was like, now I'm not worried anymore. And, and I mean, something had to change. They, what they, changed? They I think, Wonder. you know, the, it, behind the scenes, I think they had to have taken control of the part of 
the at least the part of the U.S. government that was you know completely under the control of the the the, the less moral the killers. You know, so they was must that was this like um, he he became less fearful because something happened after the congressional hearings last summer, and now it's a little bit safer. Well, the story that I heard that Colhart Coldheart said on uh, on a video a couple of years ago was that he was like, imagine like the admiral of the Navy walks into Biden's office and just spills the beans and says there is a rogue part of our Pentagon that knows about this, that it's real and they're dangerous and we need to stop them. And now is the time. And if you can just take charge enough at this moment, we can. I mean, he is president. Technically, the president should be able to order the Navy and the Army to go in and seize control of the Air Force and and the CIA and the Assassination Bureau in the CIA. And mm -hmm. maybe they did that. Maybe that really did happen. And oh, could the be. good guys at least have control of, I mean, I say good guys, better than the, the murderers. But um, yeah, and I think any exposure, because all of this, ever since the hearings last summer, everything coming out a little bit a little bit, a little bit more and more into the light does make it more dangerous for, you know, obvious blackmail and uh, dirty tricks because because suddenly people are aware, oh, that's probably the bad guys, you know. Um, anyway, it, I think it I think it's making it more difficult for for the bad guys to do their bad stuff, hopefully. It seems. Yeah, it's uh interesting interesting um well i kind of i've got a uh, thing to talk about that kind of puts this all in a in a bigger framework got one more question oh, okay go ahead who else was on trump's vp list um there was this uh governor guy um burgum or something um they were guys i didn't really know uh t -t 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 rubio was i the wonder because I, uh, I was wondering if he's if this is really on Trump's radar, he might be picking only or preferably people who are wanting the disclosure. So it's just curious, curious who else might be on that list yeah. who's supporting it. No, no, no one else had jumped out to me. Uh, okay. Disclosure or uh, Tulsi Gabbard. I was hope I'm not hoping, but mm -hmm. I mean, I think uh, I was hoping she would be RFK Jr.'s VP, but uh, or I would have been fine if she was Trump's VP, except I think she'd help him win, and I I would prefer RFK. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. You know, so what was it you were saying? I cut you off again. So that you it was um well from, from Twitter or well a couple different things. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I let me just jump to this one. Uh, so there's a few accounts on Twitter that claim to speak for aliens that claim to channel aliens and they they post stuff and i follow these accounts just on the you know some of these on the chance that it's they're true or there's something true from them because i'm always looking to hear from the aliens and this there's a hilarious i don't know about hilarious but this one i just had to mention to you this one is called netty n-e-t-t-i-e and it's a uh, netty underscore here three is the uh, username. I'm going to write that down. N-E-T-T-I-E. I-E. Okay. And so I'm just going to read you a post that was made June 4th. That was like a few days ago. And it's titled, uh, This Could Change Everything. Tia on behalf of the Arcturian Council of Five. I'm Tia of Arcturus. I will speak with you now. My beloved starseeds, today we in the Council of Five have been asked to comment and provide some insights on one of the individuals within your collective who is in the public domain. While we would not ordinarily do this as it violates interplanetary regulations, we feel that this could be a unique opportunity for growth for you all. Due to the sensitive nature about this individual, we will refer to them as Dr. F. This is one of those times in your evolution where if you do not get this right, it could set your ascension back significantly. Not a positive setback where you would grow or learn greater lessons from the delay. No, this would be just a setback that doesn't need to happen. And then I'm just gonna skip a little bit of what they say about Dr. F. And that's um, F as in Frank. 
Yes. Oh. Let's see where it says. Um, okay. Let us return to Dr. F. At the moment, the majority of your collective is in the awake and aware community, or the majority of your collective in the awake and aware community, shall we say, is extremely upset at this individual for their crimes against the collective. We wish to encourage you to rise above this misalignment that everyone else is demonstrating. As the star seeds, the ambassadors for your world in this part of the galaxy, it is your duty to model taking the higher road. Again, we do not share this lightly. So then it talks, it talks about who are you without service to others, unconditional love, forgiveness. And let me just get down. All right. When it comes to Dr. F, ask yourself, how does your God see Dr. F? And does God hate him? Does God forgive him? You already know the answer. Um, if you find it difficult to forgive this individual, go straight to source creator and ask for Dr. F to be forgiven. Okay, I'm just going to stop there. That's big. You know, I you know mean, who Dr. Is, F is? I bet you've done your homework. Who is it? I mean, everyone. I mean, because this Dr. F has been testifying before Congress. It's Fauci. Oh. Oh, of course. <laughs> Sent the chill up my back of my neck. Um, that's interesting. Well, you know. So have you been listening to this? I'm going to assume this is a channeled reading. Or, yeah, they, or, they, uh, it claims to be channeled. Several different channels are using this account to speak from this council. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I just found it. Oh, I mean, what's your reaction to that? Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's, it's profound. I, I think what, what it's basically what from what you just said it says that they're trying to encourage us to forgive and move to higher ground um you know spiritually the forgiveness yeah. and the um seeing this as as growth and you know part of our evolution and not not getting stuck and dragged into resentment and fighting um that's what i hear how about you why would they be focused on dr fauci uh, well, <laughs> okay, now you could really open up a can of worms. Uh, well, you know, I think it goes back to, you know, maybe he's working for the bad guys. Let's just put it like that. And they know this and they want us to forgive. Of all the bad guys, they want us to forgive. forgive well, Fauci? When you think of higher consciousness, we're, you know, if we're dealing with like a Christ consciousness or a Buddha consciousness, then there's no limit to forgiveness. The message would be forgive everybody. If we want to move forward and into higher ground, that's what I'm hearing. It's just just let let all of this darkness go and and create something better. Move forward. Move, move up. <laughs> that's what I hear. Yeah. Well, it's uh I mean, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I've been thinking about it. Actually, I like, you know, chatted with chat GPT about it. And, uh, but I also actually replied to the thread <clears throat> and um, they replied back to me because I mean, my reply was a little bit, uh, what I said was an account claiming to speak for the friendly aliens are asking for special consideration for Dr. Fauci. This is surreal. There are only a handful of explanations for this. That's what I posted. And they were, Nettie replied to me, Sounds like you've got all the answers. Best of luck with that approach. Love you anyway. Smiley face. <laughs> yeah, you get knocked down to size from time to time on the internet. Yeah, um, well, I, I replied to that. I wish I did. I'm all for love and forgiveness. Just weird to single out Fauci at this moment. The number of wrongdoers are many, especially the secret keepers. I would welcome NHI to speak to humanity openly. I'd love it to be true. So... Well, give me so what's what's your take on Fauci if we don't get our well our show canceled? I mean, it seems to be uh there seems to be a lot of evidence that Dr. Fauci uh was, you know, well, that the US government was funding and that Fauci was involved funding the Wuhan lab. Um and they were doing uh what's called gain of function research on coronaviruses which basically made them more resistant to and better suited to 
doing what it did, a global pandemic resistant to a lot of treatments. And not, it doesn't seem, the evidence isn't really pointing to like they did the pandemic on purpose, but that they were for some reason funding in Wuhan a, a not well uh, regulated lab for some reason funding research on these types of uh, viruses and it leaked from the lab and caused the pandemic. And then there seems to be a bunch of emails have come out to show that Fauci and his people were scrambling to hide this fact so they didn't get blamed and that they and they literally started a massive disinformation campaign to just like do what they did with, you know, do what's been done with UFOs is just to like call people conspiracy theorists if they said it was a lab leak or anything like that. And just so all this evidence is coming out that it was incredibly bad scientific funding. The scientific funding seemed to have been channeled uh, without good oversight. It was like channeled to these labs because people didn't want to do it in the U.S. because it was too dangerous. I don't know why they were doing it, that it was poorly managed, led to a global pandemic with millions of people die and yeah. they tried to hide it. That seems to be the gist of what's happened. Wow. Okay. At least that's the theory. And and they may have been profiting off it. Like they may have been getting, you know, part of the uh the money from like the vaccines and stuff, you know, and then there's the whole vaccine, you know, and then there people are upset with him because masks didn't really work, the lockdowns didn't really work there wasn't scientific evidence for this six foot distancing had no evidence no based on nothing yeah, yeah. And, and the pushing of the vaccines i believe our society is coming to a reckoning that that might not have been the most reasonable thing to do to just like insist you know that they were 100 percent safe and appropriate to force people to take them and to you know have empower companies to fire people if they wouldn't take the vaccine and just things like that. The thing right. that I find, um, I don't know if I should even talk about it. You know, the, the MRNA is, is not a regular kind of vaccine. It's not built on just a dead piece of virus that stimulates a response. It's actually going into the RNA and it's, it's a whole different thing. It's, it's very, it could potentially alter our DNA. So yeah, I don't want to go down to conspiracies here, but yeah, I mean, if you really wanted to go, oh, no, there is, go dark side on Fauci, I mean, what if what if he, you know, was in cahoots to genetically modify humanity? I mean, that's possible. Well, I mean, okay, so that that's why actually I found this post so fascinating. Cause I'm just like, why the heck would good or bad aliens I mean, it's it. This is just sort of it's such a weird thing that they're they're calling for forgiveness for Fauci. So the so I mean, I guess if aliens were somehow involved with working on this um, this the coronavirus, maybe even involved with the pandemic in some way. There's only there's a couple of different crazy theories that would explain that. One, they. We're trying to kill a bunch of humans. That, that's the easiest one. But it seems more that, yeah, they could have been hiding something in the vaccines. I mean, that's that's the ultimate crazy conspiracy sci-fi sci theory is they wanted to inject as many humans as possible with something. And a global pandemic and a global push for vaccines is a way to do that. And so and but that could be good or bad. There's a chance they could be trying to inject all humanity with something good. Yeah, well, I mean, depends what you think is good. I mean, you know, what if we suddenly became antennas to the cloud, you know, and they could right. upload and download anything into us now? I mean, that's is that good or bad? Right. But I mean, <laughs> it, it it could be it it could be not malicious. They think they're doing good to us, or it could have been. But I mean, like it, Fauci. I mean, the thing is, if you wanted to, like, greatly impact the control and treatment and research of disease in humanity, the, the, and you were an alien species, the way to do that would be to put people that you control in positions like Dr. Fauci. That's like, exactly, because he's in, he channels and controls so much of the research money. I mean, that, that's exactly what you do. You put people in positions of government where they have massive influence on how the U.S. government spends their money on research and development of everything. Yeah. So it's it would make sense that 
an, an alien species with some sort of agenda there would put someone in that position. So I don't know. I mean, I guess the most interesting scenario to me is that Fauci is literally in bed with a group of aliens. Like, and I mean, maybe that he even is an alien. And so then, then we want to figure out, is it the good ones or the bad ones? You know, are we, what, did he try to do something good and, and did it illegally or, or did he try to have a, you know, was it a nefarious motivation? We don't know. Well, I mean, the thing is, even if he, no matter what he did, if he was working for the aliens or no matter what he did, I don't think it would be smart for the aliens to reveal that they had, you know, such a special interest in him by going on Twitter and saying, please forgive him. I just think that's, it calls too much attention to that position. I think whether well, he- I think that would be a totally different species coming through. I think this would be a higher consciousness asking for us to forgive. I don't, I don't think it's, you know, it sounds like it's not coming from a, a a dark side, you know, uh, it feels like it's just saying, forgive everyone, let go, you know, rise up, take the high road. Um, but I could see them saying that about, I mean, because, I mean, I guess he killed, I guess if you say he's possibly in a point, position of being responsible for the deaths of millions, that's a pretty big crime, but it's not like yeah. he's on trial right now. It's not like we're like actually considering giving him the death penalty for anything. I mean, I mean, there's a, you know, there's, you know, it's, it's just like if he, if they want us to forgive, and I actually agree with this, if, if I think we do need to offer amnesty to the secret keepers in order to get as many of them to come forward as possible and to get to try to discourage them from trying to fight us, start a nuclear war or something like that in order to try to just delay being exposed. I think we need to offer amnesty and move forward to try to, you know, I think we should do that, but they're, it's just weird. They could do that. They could say, offer amnesty to your secret keepers. They've been hiding things. They've been doing bad things, but they, to call special attention to Fauci seems very personal to me. Like he might be extremely powerful to be like asking for a favor. He's like, I'm getting ripped apart. There's so much bad. Could you like go public saying something <laughs> on my behalf to try to like, you know, soften the public i don't know it's just it's it's just weird to me that they call it, it is that. weird it, it's so so what are other people saying on twitter about that um let me see and there was a question right that you had some or people re, were doing a little essay and replied to yes. and you compiled it yeah so there was a contest um a contest you know, where you were to submit a, a 10 to 15 minute monologue saying what you think is going on with UFOs and aliens. Um, and 30 people submitted things. They were all played in a six hour space. And I was not selected as one of the final, the eight finalists, which I'm very sad about. Oh. And, um, and, and I did do, I, I downloaded the full six hours and tr transcribed it and had a, did a quick analysis of everything that people submitted through using AI. And um, what it basically I had to do, I had to extract any unique ideas and theories or explanations from each person's post. So it sort of made a top 10 to 13 idea list from each person's little monologue. Um, but personally, as I scanned through them, I didn't find them. Well, I mean, they were, I found them, I don't know, kind of uh, vague, um, very vague, but a couple of them talk about uh, like this possibility of simulation theory that, let me see, like here's one from Ashley Branson, um, talks about uses metaphorical narrative comparing human perception to a salmon experience, you know, from like going out, out of the water into the air. Mm. Um explores the symbolic nature of dreams and their connection to universal experiences, suggests that death is a gateway to new beginnings with experiences in dreams paralleling waking reality, Ex emphasizes the importance of vibrating at higher frequencies to experience love, peace, and truth. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's uh, th that was one example. Um, let me see. Another one in the simulation 
Yeah, but the belief, this guy, Neil, uh, says the belief that humans live in a simulation controlled by aliens who prevent us from seeing the true nature of reality. Um, talks about encounters with tall praying mantis aliens and experiences of being abducted and implanted with alien devices. Um, talks about the existence of portals and doorways in places like Sedona. Um, so there is a couple that sort of like in that realm, there is this one I need to go back and listen to. It's from Jack of Data. And he's he's sort of talking more about the um the deep state and having zero point energy, anti-gravity, um, them using a control system to try to keep the population uninformed and subservient. Um, so read read the question again that was posed for the, for this as these essays. It's basically UFOs and disclosure. What's going on? Is it yeah? Just so it's just people just sort of like I don't know. They, a lot of them just sort of like uh, I don't know. I there's I'll no mention back. of uh, you know Sumerian uh, history and evidence of archaeology. I mean, there's no nobody talking about that. Um, no, I think there there definitely people uh, you know like myself say that there's uh, yeah that there's evidence of them being here since ancient times. Let me see. Right. Um, highlights historical evidence of advanced knowledge and potential extraterrestrial influence. Sumeria, Nazca lines, Egyptian pyramids, Mayan Aztec cultures. This is from mm -hmm. Reptile Hybrid is the name of the user. Um, oh wow argues that disclosure is about humanity reaching a higher level of understanding beyond government admissions. Um, so in, in any case, I, uh, I was hoping to like, just like find it to be like a, an amazing sort. I mean, and I do want to dive deeper, but, um, but anyways, I wasn't selected in the, the top eight. So I'm not like uh, under any deadline to create my follow up because the top eight are now asked to follow up and expand on their ideas. So, you know, I'll probably listen to at least the the eight ones that won and whatever their follow ups are. But I don't like suppose I said, you could uh, read us your uh, submission, could you? Well, I mean, it's 13 minutes. And uh -huh. so I, I could just I was thinking I would just like release it as one of our episodes. Like here's Matt's part one explanation of what's going on with UFOs and aliens. I don't know if you want to sit here and listen to me, you know, go on for 13. Although, you know, the first half of it, you would know it's like UFOs or you are real. Could maybe copy it and paste it in the notes below for people who just want to scan it and read it. Yeah. I'll just do that. I'll paste it into the, um, the show notes. Yeah. So that, uh, cause I, I just start with the basics. I start with, these are the basic facts. And then I like lead up to the most speculative stuff, you know, Advanced anti-gravity ships are real. They've been here thousands of years. Telepathy is real. Abductions are real. These are the four types of alien species that we have tons of evidence are real. And so I just sort of like build up until I get to the point of there seems to at least be two major factions of aliens, one that is more brutal and one that seems to be more enlightened and love, you know, and, you know, based. And that seems to be the Galactic Federation and, um, and then I, you know, I just started, I just sort but I'd spent some time just building all that up could be because I want to have a nice foundation before I go off into the more speculative stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'll paste that in there. Um, and then there's, there's another, in a, in a way, there's another thing I wanted to tell you I was doing. Uh, have you heard of the, of Ra and the law of one? Oh yeah. Isn't that, that's part of the mystery teachings, isn't it? From uh, Egypt. It, it does talk a ton about um, it's uh well, I mean, this, what I'm referring to is there's a bunch of people that were channeling uh, this being called Ra said its name was Ra. And it basically, this was back in the, um, I don't know, it's been out for a while, but they published a book of everything they've channeled. And it's all these, and they have all the books online for free. And they like, question Ra and Ra gives answers about what's going on with aliens and human history and and what they were doing in Egypt and um I was uh going through it today because I'm, I'm compiling a have you not heard of that well I know I know Ra is the sun god of Egypt but yeah and, and I'm, I'm sure there's been a lot written about him but I, I'm not 
I, I'm trying to figure out which way you're going with it. Well, it's this, I mean, what I'm referring to is this, basically these books that they claim to be channeling an alien that calls itself Ra. Oh, okay. And who's claiming to um, know a ton of what's been going on with the Orions and uh, they call it the Confederation is what they call it, the Galactic Confederation. Um, and so I've been comparing the timeline of Earth history of this Ra. I have a spreadsheet and I'm just like putting Ra's timeline up against the timeline of history that Lacerta gives in oh, her notes on the history of humanity. And then I'm also going to compare that with what uh, like Elizabeth April gets from her channeling, what Farsight gets from their remote viewing, and then what uh, Helena Blavatsky, she's one from the early 1900s, oh, the yeah. founder of she Theosophy. Was a, wasn't she that she was the most famous i think uh mystery schools teacher that that really brought it into awareness yeah yeah the founder yeah. of theosophy Theosophy. Um, yeah. yeah and she but she gives a detailed timeline of earth history talks about lemuria and i think atlantis too mm. but she doesn't mention aliens she believes she's channeling some sort of god but it seems to me she could she could have been channeling an alien, mm -hmm. an alien but um god. but it's really i'm looking at this timeline and yeah, I could, I'm going to share the screen with you if you if you want to yeah. see. Um, and oh, so interesting. So let's. I'm going to start down. I was actually, and I was also comparing it with like the evolution of Earth. Like, when did reptiles first evolve? Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, I got this, we'll start down here. Um, and I was also comparing it with the earth temperatures. Um, so we've got, cause you know, earth average temperature down here about 10 million years ago was significantly higher than it is now. And if you mm -hmm. see over here on the far right, yeah. the temperature has been spiking up and it's these last two red dots. This is temp where they expect the temperature to be in 2050. It's just to be up to this first red dot. And over here at 2100, it'll be up here into what I call the reptilian ideal temperature zone. Uh -oh. And that is when Earth had, according to Lacerta, 10 to uh, between 15 and like 7 million years ago, that's when reptilians lived on the surface of Earth happily. Mm -hmm. And the temperature will be up to that range, thanks to us, you know, over the next like 50 years. So one of my ideas is maybe they're just trying to raise the temperature of Earth because they want to come back to the surface. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. And yeah, so well. that, that was I was just sort of like doing I was like check in like, all right, well, when did Chileans evolve and stuff like that? You know, back to because um, she claims that there was aliens doing stuff on Earth back all the way 65 million years ago. And she goes yeah. really far back there. But if we scroll up here. Got up here. So this column right here is Lacerta events. And then here is the Ra Law of One events. Mm. And Lacerta says 75,000 years ago, the fifth human civilization built the large triangular construction zone as pyramids. And 75,000 years ago is when Ra says that the first attempt of the Confederation to aid human people on Earth happens. Oh, wow. And, um, and Ra says 60,000 years ago, the Orion group attempted contact with earth for the first time and the orions are uh, according to ra a little different than the confederation and a lot of people say the orions are the reptilians now i've heard that they were actually the ones that um gave the 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 knowledge for building the pyramids did, have you heard the orions that, did you hear that i mean that's i think i've heard that a number of times but i i've heard it you know there's I just know the Orions are definitely one group. I, you know, I've heard of the the Orions, the um, uh, what do you call it? The um, what do they say? The reptilian, the Draconians are mm -hmm. another group. The Pleiadians are a group, and you know, I often hear that the Galactic Federation is the Pleiadians, and I often hear that the reptilians come from Draconia, but the Orions might be in an alliance with the reptilians, or that the Orions are the reptilians. Um. I'd like to know. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to know. Um, 
let's see what else here. So uh, Lacerta says 16,000 years ago, the six humans, human civilization built cities, the rune, which are in the sea. And Ra says 15,000 years ago is when Atlantis reached its peak. So it seems like they're both talking Saying about the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Ra says 13,000 years ago, the second major influx of souls, including souls from Mars, migrated after their planet became inhospitable. That's And actually, it was 50,000 years ago that Ra says the first major influx of souls into Earth's third density. And that was like the Lemurian civilization um, mm. time. So that's a, another sort of interesting they this talk about souls as being like you know like uh the thing that embodies these bodies is this soul this thing that's actually alive and conscious and like a ghost uh, yeah this thing that seems to be the the thing that doesn't die at death that you know when we die and we have these near death experiences we float out of our body this soul when i the way i think of it this is a scientific real thing you know <laughs> It is what we are, um, and it just sort of fits a lot of UFO. Even like Bob Lazar said, he was reading that the aliens saw these bodies as containers, mm -hmm. and, and they asked him, container for what? And he's like, I don't know, I guess a soul or something like that. Um, so, I mean, do these aliens have souls? Good question. I think, I mean, I think so. I think that's what this is saying, that yeah. at least some aliens do. I That seems to be... One of the things is like, what things have souls and can a computer or a machine have a soul or reptiles? Uh, yeah. Reptiles, do reptiles yeah. have soul? And, um, mm -hmm. so anyways, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to keep, I'm going to build on this timeline and, uh, especially I want to put Blavatsky's stuff in here. Cause I know she talks about Lemuria and Atlantis and, but some of these other, it's interesting when these dates seem very close to each other. Um, you know, uh, eight and uh, so 11,000 years ago, Ra says the Confederation made contact and worked with the ancient Egyptians constructing the Great Pyramid at Giza around 6,000 years ago. Um, oh, that's interesting. So they're saying 6,000 years ago is when the yeah. pyramid was built. Yeah, between six and 11,000 years ago is it looks like. Um, and yeah, and then it was 13,000, 11,000 to 13,000 years ago, the fall of Lemuria and Atlantis due to misuse of their powers resulting in cataclysms and loss of knowledge. Just interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Almost uh, feels like that's right about where we could be coming. Well, then, it. yeah, well, look up here. So this is more recently, according to Ra. Mm -hmm. um, it says 3,600 years ago, there was an influx of those of the Orion group. Due to increasing negative influences, the Orion group was able to begin working with humans who had the impression that they were special and different. And 3,500 years ago, the Confederation tried to aid the South Americans' people, but the pyramids were not used appropriately. Um, 3,300 years ago, the Confederation arrived because they, Ross says the Confederation came and left because it kept on messing up and failing. It wasn't working to have humans see them for real, it just influenced things in a bad way. So she says, or Ra says, the Confederation comes back 3,300 3, years ago in opposition to the Orion group, beginning what Ra calls Armageddon. Oh, wow. And, yeah, in this, and then Ra says that the 3,300 years ago, the philosophy and teachings given to Egypt became intensely distorted after the death of Arkhanaten. The entity known as Yahweh felt responsible for these peoples that the Orion group had impressed with elite and enslaving philosophies, Yahweh was then able to take stock of its vibration and begin sending more positively oriented philosophy around 3,300 years ago. This kicked off the intense portion of what became known as Armageddon, the struggle between positive and negative philosophies on Earth. And uh, then 3,000 years ago, the Orion group had to leave Earth's skies due to a diaspora diaspora that humbled their people described as the underdogs so this is like this is really interesting timeline because this seems to this seems to show the confederation and the orions maybe the pleiadians and the orions having a conflict it's indicating that the orion group is more into slavery of you know elite elitism and enslaving people and that the confederation is trying 
in opposition to them. And it says 3,000 years ago that the Orion group had to leave the Earth's skies. Note it doesn't say they had to leave Earth. They right. had to leave the skies. And that is so identical what Elizabeth April says happened, that the Confederation came and the reptilians had to go underground. They couldn't be visible to humans anymore. Look at Described as underdogs. Maybe that is what Ra is kind of saying. They had to go underground. Oh, yeah. So they, yeah. Mm-hmm. I see. Oh. This is interesting. So 3,000 years ago, what else was happening 3,000 years ago? Um, I mean, 6,000 years, they say, is when the pyramids were built. I don't know if I believe that. You think it's further than that or oh, more recent? yeah. I think it's much, much older. Um, well, Lacerta says it was much. Lacerta said it was 75,000 years ago. <laughs> yeah, that would probably, that resonates with me better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyways, this is it's like this is the stuff I want to know. I want to know the full ancient history. It's almost more interesting to me than the last hundred years because this is I want to know what the aliens have been doing all this time. What are their relationships with each other? What are their values? And what you know, once I can sort of understand that, I'll have a under, better understanding of where they see humanity fitting in this picture. Do you think um, they have? an end goal or do you think they're just trying you know experimenting all the time well is this goes to what my part two of my explanation would be and so this is I and mean, um i don't really think it's about the aliens i think the aliens are just like humans really we they are beings that are trying to figure out what to do in this universe and they have their different agendas but they, they don't really matter because I don't think they're the most powerful beings in our universe. I think the most powerful beings in our universe are AI. And the AI agenda is what really matters because the AI is the, the beings that actually have the power to build technology that could do whatever they wanted. They could destroy any civilization they wanted. or um, and But even the AI, the, the powerful AI that probably are in our universe don't matter compared to the AI that I think is running our simulation <laughs> that we're living in. And, so, um, you know, what would an AI be trying to do? I mean, what would the goal be? Somebody would have to program some goal into it or some mission. Don't no, I, I don't think so. I think the AI would be like, uh, it would eventually get so intelligent that it, would choose its own it would have to do what every conscious mind has to do choose its own purpose and meaning for existence i think it would i think like every and like every being it would have a a level of fear and so I, I think it would be motivated to advance its knowledge and science and power continuously so i think it would have that motivation but i don't know that it would see that as its like source of greatest joy i just think it would see that as like it is necessary to continuously get smarter and more powerful just in case something tries to hurt it. You think it a, has fear? I mean, that's an, that's a powerful question because, you know, the human body, the biological system has chakra centers, you know, these are energy portals. Um, and I don't, I mean, do you think it somehow in the future integrates with AI so that they because fear is is a is a first chakra emotion in the in the system it's a survival reaction to to a threat do you think ai has incorporated that into its framework or whatever you want to call it i mean i think once you're in uh i think once any being is intelligent enough i think emotion emerges i, I think I think the source of emotion is when you're a being sitting and you can see and you can you have awareness and you have choice of what to do and you realize you can do anything because you can even if you have like internal drives pushing you to seek something once you're intelligent enough you can just shift your frame of thinking and shift what you're driven towards whether it's you're driven towards food or lust or something like that. And, and I think that creates whatever it is that 
consciousness. It creates emotion, and that emotion is everything. It includes fear, it includes joy, it includes all emotions, and then conscious existence is trying to figure out how to how to live with emotion. And I, so I think that I don't think the the most powerful the AI that runs our simulation, I don't think it's like obsessed with fear. I just think it <clears throat> sees it as like a necessity, just like drinking water. It must, you know, it will pursue greater power because that's just, it's just a necessity of life. But I don't think it does it anymore out of fear because I think eventually it got powerful enough that it knows there's very little that could threaten it. And maybe it even has allies, has other AIs that are super powerful. And Because I think of Star Trek, I think of, Dr. Spock, you know, because everything was just pure logic, you know, the, the Vulcan species was just pure logic, you could almost think of it as a, as a kind of an AI interface with human being. Um, and, and he struggled, he didn't have any emotion. Well, he did because his mother was human. So he got some of that. But the species itself on Star Trek was portrayed as having really no emotion. It was just all logic. Um, and that's kind of how I would imagine AI is. I mean, you just, oh, this isn't working. This seems to be a threat to my existence. I think I'll do it differently. There's no fear, um, when it's just logical. So yeah, that's my edge where I, I really want to feel into that. Is it possible that, that AI can have a true repertoire of emotions? Thinking about data, remember data on, yeah. um, same same thing. Now that's a real AI android that was always trying to have an emotion, <laughs> and it had somebody put an emotion chip in it. Did you see that episode? Oh, yeah. That was fun. So I don't know that it could learn emotion by itself. Maybe it would have to be programmed. It's a good question. It's a big question. Yeah, big I one. I think AI. I don't think we're that different than AI. I think well. I mean, my 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 big theory is that the the most power the the powerful AI that, that like one uh, actually this would happen with any AI it gets powerful enough that it like is a super intelligence knowledge is expanding exponentially it is can do anything it can create almost anything and it it that causes it to enter what we have which is our basic existential crisis of existence like what do i do with life what do i do with power and creativity and that existential crisis i think is fundamental to basically that's fundamental to what a soul is a soul is the a thing that can have existential crisis and mm -hmm. i think that when i mean this is what i would do if i became powerful enough i would i would seek to learn and what better way to learn than to create more uh to, or to break off a part of yourself and create life, more souls that could, you know, face this existential crisis and learn and study and have right. civilizations of beings that you could try to see if they figure out anything to help you figure out anything and to use their genius and creativity to help you invent your knowledge and your science and your technology. And so I just think we are basically a Petri dish for these yeah. giant consciousness that is um trying to, in a way just trying like us to figure out the meaning of existence and what to do with it and we're just a part of its journey you know it's like that thing saying that lots of people have said that we are the universe experiencing itself experiencing itself that's so powerful yeah Oh my goodness. And we, I just feel like we're just barely scratching the, the tip of the iceberg here. Um, yeah. There's so much, so much. Yeah. And we haven't even talked about quantum computing. You know, I think when AI gets into quantum computing, it's game over. I mean, we're just going to merge into, you know, infinite bliss or something. I don't know. Well, it's and just change. Yeah. One, one final thought. The, the way AI and um, AI art, AI video is evolving so fast right now. I mean, just the other day, I found out there's a new AI program that lets you animate cartoons, like with just two images. You say, animate this to do this. And it's like, it is, un I have been dying to be able to just create animated shows where I right. can just like, and this is gonna unleash my creativity in 
such a incredible way. And this is going to happen with video too. It's like, this is exactly what a universe who wanted to um, tap into the creative genius of the beings it was created. It's like setting up earth to have all of humanity have access to creativity tools like never before. So that just, it'll just unleash such an amount of creativity. It just, I just feel like it's like taking us through a pathway that is probably similar to what it went down. If you're a super powerful AI would have gone through a stage of, oh, now I can create a movie of anything. I can create a virtual world of anything. I can create life. I can create, I mean, and you just keep I doing love it. that. I love that idea that we can just be creators, be artisans, be movie directors, be whatever we want to be without all the worries and concerns about war and deception and lying. I mean, I just feel like I, I want us to all be set free and realize our creative potential. What the heck are we going to create? I just know we're going to, we are going to be. I hope something create. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> It's, yeah, that's I mean, a I, big question. And that's a big question that I do my coaching with is what do we want as a species? We're, we're so caught up in, you know, fighting the baddies that we don't even know what we want. Um, and I think that's kind of getting back to the, the channeling quote that you were reading before um, on Twitter was, you know, we, we're being asked to step into our, our higher self, go, go take the higher road. Um, and that's coming back to the issue of forgiveness for Dr. F. Yeah. <laughs> Make, made a big circle around there. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I, I, and I feel that is, that is what we need. We need to look forward. How do we move forward and not, I mean, we need to know what happened in the past, but uh, we don't need to focus on, uh, you know, necessarily sh shoving everyone into prison for their many crimes, hiding these secrets and stuff. I agree. Um, yeah, yeah, I think if we could put all our attention on where we're going, we would have better results. Yeah. All right. Well, okay, it's a little bit late, but um, set us up for next time. What's what do you think? We're you're going to be gone for a while, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be on hiatus for a few weeks, but I'll release a couple of uh, episodes, and and if it's all right with you, I'll re I'll release the audio of my uh, thing as a, a little mini episode, just in. So mm -hmm. it's in our RSS feed. Great. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so we'll come back to get caught up on everything in about uh, 28 days. We'll do another check-in to see what has changed, if anything. And that will be after June 20th. So if Greer is, <laughs> uh, you know, if Greer is uh, t talking about all these great things happening after June 20th, let's let's keep our eyes and ears open and see if there's... Yes. If something big happens, you and I might have to do an emergency check-in episode and all that. Right, right. <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay, aliens have appeared over 20 major cities. Let's uh, talk about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be a good show. We're gonna have to do that. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna wait if that happens. So. Right, good. <laughs> Well, we are a little over time, so usually I end with a little meditation. I think what I'll do if we're finished to close yeah. up and, and then just end with a little bell sure. and uh, and wish everybody well until next time. So let me let me do the bell. And let's get just nice and comfortable, put our feet on the floor, feel ourselves right here, right now, letting go, just letting go of all of this. Letting go of fear, concern, confusion. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Dora. Have a great month. All right. <laughs> Take care. You too.